you guys. Uh, hey there, business owners, directors, and marketeers. In today's show, I'm meeting Dean Lin from Trusted Media. Um, it's a digital marketing and web design agency, um, and we will talk uh, all about sort of his experience today. I'm Lucas, your host, like always. Um, let me tell you guys a little bit more about Dean. So he has been actually seeing both sides of the coin. He has been actually running marketing agencies, but also marketing his own product. So he comes with the experience from being on both sides uh, of the table. Um, and he has been working usually with companies with who have challenges hitting their sales targets, who maybe lack the experience in commercial marketing, um, or with the marketing actions that are actually being implement, implemented, not really giving the results. This is where Dean is stepping in um, with a very unique and transformative um, and even they say holistic approach uh, to grow, you know, startups, struggling companies, as well as successful businesses. So um, I'm very happy to have you here then today. Um, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Lucas. Really good. So tell us all about your, your company. What is it all about? I want to hear it from yourself. Um, so Trusted Media was birthed from a, uh, I suppose, my mindset from previous experience in other agencies. Um, we, I suppose I... I had a, I suppose, a couple of minutes one one day where I was uh, just meeting from a client, and I wanted to to kind of serve clients on a on a different way. I wasn't happy with the current agency model. I wasn't happy the fact that clients saw a very tick list process, or or say like, uh, this is how much I pay, this is how many hours I get, sort of approach. Yep. Um, I wanted to burst something different. Uh, I wanted to come across more consultative. I wanted us and uh, myself and the team to be very uh, accessible. Um, I wanted us to be able to relay our knowledge in in an array of different uh, different uh, I suppose expertise or knowledge. Um, so a big thing that that kind of that's what birthed the original uh, growth. Uh, well, I suppose the original start of Trusted Media. Um, so from there, we've really kind of. Um, funny enough, we're literally just about to relaunch ourselves as Trusted Media uh, uh, and become a partner. Um, we, we're coming away from the agency term um, because we feel it's got a lot of negative uh, acumen to it. Um, and the whole idea of that is is um, you're not a client, you're a partner. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, what does partnership mean? <laughs> At the end of the day, it's like you, um, like your girlfriend or your partner in life. It's the same approach. It's a very open, honest relationship. It's uh, very transparent. It's very holistic. We discuss all things business, marketing, and everything else in between. Um, and we really try and support all areas. Um, we don't. I don't want to say we pigeonhole ourselves as uh, as marketers as such. Mm -hmm. Hence, but we have a lot of experience in it. I don't want to pigeonhole us into saying that we're web designers or brand designers, but we've got a lot of experience doing it and doing it well. So I was like, actually, we want to stand out from the crowd. So hence, hence why uh, we birth trusted media. We still feel that we're um, pioneering in a lot of different spaces. So um, I hope. <laughs> um, we're going to so learn yeah, all about it today. Very good. So yeah, very, that's uh, that's trusted media. Very good. So that gives us a rough overview there. Um, who would you say are the people who benefit most uh, from your services? So maybe you could tr describe us like typical clients, like a little bit that you know where you feel they really benefit. Okay, so a typical client to us is actually the business owners. Um, we whereas in the past we used to target very much into the marketing team. Um, now we've kind of hit the board, so we want to talk to the directors and the and the board of the company. Um, a big thing, again, what I started to learn over the last couple of years is actually stop talking to the marketer in the room and talk to the businessman at the end of the day, because um, that is my biggest, biggest, uh, I suppose, advice to anybody in an agency environment is um, because you talk you talk numbers at the end of the day. Uh, yep. You talk proposition and value. You don't talk, hey, um, I want to be number one in Google. Um, yep. I love that. I love that uh, message that always comes through our website is like, hey, I want to grow our social following or, hey, I want to be number one in Google. And every time that we walk into a pitch uh, or a discussion around the actual needs of a business, we always end up talking to the business owner and we always question why they asked. 
Uh, and the nine times out of ten, it always comes out that um, it's not what they actually actually need. It's what yep. they potentially think that they want. Yep. Um, we come across not arrogant, but we come across very knowledgeable in those discussions in the sense of actually we're, we're trying to understand what, what triggered this conversation. Um, and it always comes down to, oh, my competitors are doing it. Um, oh, uh, I spoke to uh, another friend who has a business and they're doing it. Yep. And it was like, actually, it comes down to that point of, well, why? At the end of the day, you know, marketing or redesigning a website, building an app or whatever it may be, or rebranding has to come from the why. And that's the big thing that we we push ourselves for is the big question of asking. I think we ask it probably five to ten times in our discovery discussions. And predominantly now it is business owners and, and board, board members uh, of the companies. Very interesting. So you're moving basically from that initial request through asking those like five or more whys into having a conversation with the business owner who then makes the final call. Very interesting. What can they expect uh, when working with your company? Maybe you can give us a rough outline what working uh, with Trusted Media means. Um, working with us, like I said before, is like a partnership. So we start with an initial discovery dis like session. Um, let's not let's not over jargonize these terms. It is a it is a face to face discussion. It is um, sit down and discuss um, uh, all objects of the business, what they've done, what they've uh, what they've uh, succeeded in, what they haven't. Um, a lot of these companies have hit a plateau, so they've been potentially running you know five ten years. That's usually our base. Um, and they're literally hitting like a, a plateau of like, oh, actually, I'm not growing anymore. I'm not seeing as much uh, visitors. So we discuss all these potential things. We look over uh, analytics. We look over all the data sets. And we kind of pull that all together and say, OK, um, here's a potential strategy. Uh, and here's where I suppose a, uh, in again, not to jargonize it, here's a timeline of things that we're going to do. Yeah. And this is what we're going to do at each stage. So, um, for instance, if we did integrate a, uh, a content strategy that would be looking at all the content that is um, delivered for a brand or a company, we would say, OK, after a period of time, we're going to monitor the impact of these, set yeah. some key uh, stats that we want to monitor. And what we mean by uh, and we'll also set thresholds. So you say, OK, if it does hit this sort of level, then we know it's good. Yeah. Uh, and then if it doesn't, then we know it's bad. And then we, again, we go back to the why. So actually, why didn't that work? Or why did that work? Um, and that tends to be the typical kind of ongoing uh, approach to it. Yep. Um, so anything we implement, we always analyze the impact and we always ask the question of why. <laughs> sounds, sounds really good. Actually, what I realized is you kind of sort of, you know, pushed away the jargon and went sort of more in easier terms. I actually noticed this on your website as well. You seem to be, uh, you know, making an extra effort to, you know, remove the, the jargoning, but keeping it, you know, practical uh, to people. I think that's very, it's a very good approach. Um, okay, so now we talked a little bit about your clients and I usually like to ask, specifically marketeers and agencies that are working in that space, how do those clients usually find your business because you know you probably can you know go deep into the, your trick pocket and, and and work on that seo content but maybe just give us a, a maybe a way of a typical user journey that somebody would be coming through um once they start working with you well funny enough um we are ranked quite highly for all sorts of phrases organically uh, not just locally but also nationally and we have got some international as well um so all that sort of discovery is quite high um, but actually, typically, it is referral. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that most of our clients come through organic. They yep. they do actually don't. It is literally word of mouth. Um, yep. And it all comes from case study or testimonial. So um, because of the impact so great with some of our clients, they've, they're have they they're shouting for us. They're our biggest ambassadors. Um, you know, and actually... I tend to, when speaking to new clients that haven't come from referral, I always say, well, speak to speak to our existing. Like, I have nothing to hide, neither, none of us do. So why, you know, they're the best people to speak to. Very good. Do you have <laughs> um, any tips maybe for, you know, if business owners are listening and they would like to maybe enhance their referral mechanisms a little bit? Anything you could recommend? 
The big thing is is asking. Um, uh, I think that's the the biggest thing. So we, we we've been asked this quite a lot, and I literally come back to the basics of just ask. If you if you are doing a good job for your client and they are seeing results, um, then ask them because at the end of the day they're going to be more than happy to recommend. And also, if you do ask them and they're not happy to recommend, what's great is you get that honest feedback there and then <laughs> and you get <laughs> and why probably right absolutely and do you know what in the early days of trusted media i asked that quite a few times maybe a bit too premature and and some of them came back and say dean i would love to recommend your team and your company but actually one thing i would push back is is you need to make sure you do this in the future and I find that that's, that's really helped the honest conversation. And, you know, coming back to that partnership, it's not, it's not a clinical transaction. It's not, hey, we pay you X a month, so we treat you like this. And there's this real stickiness called a conversation. Um, so it's that partnership. So it's going to be fluid. You know, it's got to be conversational. So make sure you ask. Uh, and there's multiple ways. You can jump on the phone um, when you have your review discussions about your reports. Hey, it'd be really great. Actually, do you know anybody locally to you or other business owners that you would think that would need our service? Yep. You know, simple as that. Um, you know, I like it. Very interesting. Very just straight to the point. Um, but probably a lot of people missing that step actually to ask at the right time. Mm. Um, I'm curious though, if you have a, sort of a focus on referral um, and a bit of content and SEO, how would you describe your, you know, how are you thinking about sort of a few steps into the future? How does a company like Trusted Media sort of grow online? What do you, what are maybe some high level thoughts that you're having about growth for, for a digital marketing agency? Um, the big thing I always say is, is content's got to be accessible. Um, and that doesn't mean just written form. You know, we live in an age where actually people reading uh, has has decreased in the sense of actually what they're doing is skim reading or power reading or whatever we term it nowadays. Yeah. Um, they skip to the title, they read the, the, the short description of it and then move on. Um, yeah. So what we've got to do is create content in different ways. So I'm a big ambassador of um, creating uh, or, or having it content accessible in different means. So, you know, the buzz terms are creative content or, or uh, interactive content. Um, but but again, it's it means different things. So uh, one client that we've uh, we used to regularly do every quarter is a, a white paper for their industry because we knew a, their target audience would read that sort of level of content. Um, data would be broken down into graphics so it was easy to visualize, um, snippets of imagery to support that content, um, and they did really well. Um, another example is um, we've created a resource called Diversity Timeline, which talks about the whole uh, hun last 100 years in history of the UK about diversity as a topic. And again, if you were to, you know, read all the different snippets um, in a, in a, I suppose, in a white paper, you'd kind of get bored. So what we've done is created an interactive website that you could scroll through. You can yeah. then, um, you can then, I suppose, click different e years. Or you can click different topics, and you can see it and visualize it and interact with it. Um, we've also created apps again to engage with customers at different points of sale. So it, I think the whole point is, is content's got to be accessible. Yep. Uh, and the key question is, is going back to the why uh, and also who is your audience? Um, because at the end of the day, you, you content can come in different means as this is. This is a podcast. Yep. You know, it's going to be in audio. There's going to be potentially bits of video. There may be a snippet of, you know, still imagery. Um, so at the end of the day, you've got to create um different means uh, and I'll also understand the audience again like who's it going out to ha. <laughs> so yeah I think that's in the short answer <laughs> that makes a lot of sense it's like it seems like bringing sort of uh, the content into its various different formats mm. and keeping in mind that people you know people's attention span is I mean, decreasing I'm not sure if it's naturally decreasing but they're definitely they're jumping from one topic to the other very quickly okay very interesting so I'm curious, um, the website for your own business, the trusted media website, you're building a website for others, but you're also holding mm -hmm. your own website. What role does that play in the mix? Um, is that key for your business? How, how, would, you, how would you describe that? Um, it's definitely key. 
um a big thing that again with our rebrand is um we we're totally rethinking how it's going to be structured um but the way we treat it is it, it's it's a potentially it's got its own being it's 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 its own organism to the business at the end of the day it's our shop window um people refer to it um people link to it people discuss it you know clients and potential look at it so you, at the end of the day you've got to treat it like a it's a person so you've got to yeah, you've got to look after it at the end of the day um you got you got to feed it you got to you got to make sure that it's well nourished so at the end of the day it, it treat it like a human like at the end of the day i know it sounds quite weird but actually if you treat it like that then you're going to look after it well um and there's a couple of i suppose myth busts that a lot of people or business owners potentially think hopefully it's evolving but um a lot of business owners think oh i'll build it and they'll come that sort of attitude yeah. um i totally debunk that all the time it is a complete myth like it doesn't matter how good your site looks at the end of the day people how they're going to find it yeah. um so that obviously comes into the marketing side of things um but also it's it's also how does it look across multiple devices um what is your i suppose your content plan so how are you going to up keep content fresh and accessible um and also look at old content at the end of the day um you know a lot of companies miss that fact of that post that you did two years ago is it still is it still relevant to this day? And if it is, is there anything we can do to update it to make it again more, you know, th into this age or the current trend? Um, so there's lots of different things. So at the end of the day, I think it's it's got to be reviewed monthly. I know that one thing that we let slip over the last six months is we haven't. Yep. Um, so potentially our human is in hospital right now. <laughs> um, so at the end of the day, we're in triage. And I think it's I think we've let it slip, but I think it's a big thing for us is that we, um, and I think a lot of agencies would be honest to say the same thing, um, but we've really had a good conversation internally to say, actually, we want to improve yep. that in the future. So actually, we're going to treat it as our own as our own employee, and it will be monthly, um, not just monthly checked in, but weekly, but monthly as in a point of audit of the, yep. okay, is it doing this? Why is it doing that? Again, going back to the why at the end of the day, if we, if our site doesn't perform well, then uh, again, potentially other people aren't going to see us in the true light. Makes, um, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. How, would you, how, how are you thinking about um, measurement on the website? And because, you know, there's a tons of metrics out there. And I'm sure you've been having a lot of conversation with clients, or, you know, from traffic to unique visitors, bounce rate, time on page, conversion rate, like all the mix there. What is it that you would usually look at to steer the business? Uh, very good question. Um, uh, it really does depend on scenario. So we tend to break down our audits into sections. So we'll break down our, um, I suppose, our content or or our news and insight or or thought leadership content into a into a different audit. Um, the reason why we do that is actually discovery that people come to this content is either through a social link um, or they've Googled a query and the article or the piece of content is visible. So the metrics there has got to be more what we'd say top of the funnel, softer metrics. So yes, time on site is important. Yes, bounce rate is important because we want to make sure or exit rate because we want to make sure that they're continuing on to the site or doing other actions. Um, so we treat that slightly different to our more static content or our front end of the site. Um, the reason why is because actually I'd say the the top of the funnel content is going to serve a different purpose. So we want to see if comments or shares or likes, uh, we want to see if um, they sign up to the newsletter or they take that exclusive offer that we've got at the end of that piece or whatever it may be. And again, that differs across client or our own content. Yep. Um, the more static or the more front end of the site um, is there to serve a purpose at the end of the day. It's a service page or it's a it's portraying a service or an offering. So we uh, at the end of the day, I always go down to the card hold, the hard cold metric of conversion. Yep. So actually, why is this page or why why is or isn't this page converting? Um, yep. And we go into hard, real hard, um, drilling down to design, uh, ease of flow, 
is the message right when this person's visiting it, et cetera, et cetera. We ask a lot of, again, questions, but it really is down to the sales side of the site or the front end of the site is the purpose of why it's there is to get inquiry. So if it's not getting inquiry, what's what's it doing? Is it A, doesn't work at all, or, or B, it is working, but we need to improve? Um, so... Makes a lot of sense. I'm sure you've seen a lot of websites then, I mean, your own, obviously, and then, you know, working with a lot of clients. What do you think, what challenges do people actually face when they try to uh, improve conversion rate? Um, what, what's what's your take on that? Um, there's an array, of, uh, again, a lot of questions. We, we tend to, we've got a document where we've got about 150 questions listed out. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty intense, um, and we don't ever go through all of them through one session whenever we're performing A, B, variation or whatever testing, we, we ask a series of questions at a period of time. Um, common thing we always find is um, whenever it's a, a fresh page or a fresh site um, that is trying to um, have that same attitude of why is it not converting, mm -hmm. um, tends to come down to a couple of things. A, the type of marketing they're targeting that site with or that page with tends to be quite wrong. Um, so they've got to be thinking about their audience at the end of the day. So not just on the website, they've got to think about how they're getting to it. Um, so the big thing is, is again, thinking about how we're going to get traffic to the site and potentially what is the sort of conversion rate we're expecting. Um, all the way down to the form size, like a big thing that I've battled with with business owners is they're sitting there with 20 fields on a form and I'm like, uh, I'm treat me like a five year old that's got a tension span of 30 seconds. I'm not going to fill that in. Yep. Now that is your audience. Unfortunately, you know, I, I don't know many people that fill in a form that size unless they're so eager. But even then, there's something going to go wrong. So actually, that field that we developed there doesn't fit all that information in, blah, blah, blah. It, it completely kills the conversion. Yep. So a big thing that we started working with is other providers or APIs to try and um, take data from the initial form fill. So, for instance, if, we could, if a business person enters in an email address, we'll try and verify other data sets against that email. So business name. Um, we'll try and pull public data from company's house. We'll try and do all these ex all these extra um, fields that these business owners or this sales team or marketing team want to know because we're like we shrink the forms, we improve the conversion, we get better data set. Um, because if we asked all this in one form, we wouldn't be able to get it. Like companies won't fill this in. Um, so there's lots of different things, I suppose. I mean, there's the whole chatbot thing. You know, we converted some of our largest clients through, um, well, not chatbot, let's be honest, it's instant messaging from the site. So, yep. um, so like a web chat, you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's a big thing for us is actually business owners, they've read enough, right, I want to talk to someone. Um, actually, I'm a bit shy to jump on a phone or I might speak to a gatekeeper. Yep. So actually, again, for me is I'm accessible via our web chat. Um, yes, you may not be able to dial straight into my phone, but actually accessible web chat, I'll sometimes have good conversations with people and I will divert them to a, um, a diary calendar to, to book in a conversation like what we did fun enough with this, yep. um, this very chat. So it's because again, conscious of time, business owners are very, um, quick to make judgment, um, quick to make a decision. And actually we try and talk to that persona. So again, depending on conversion tip there. But I, I think if you, depending on your audience, they want to know trust factors, who you've worked with, case studies, success stories, um, reviews, yeah, etc. It goes, it goes crazy. Very good. One quick question on that before we sort of slowly coming to an end uh, on, on the interview here. Um, because actually, I'm very curious on this one, uh, because we've seen a lot of businesses are not being actually very aware of conversion rate, conversion rate optimization. Is that something that sort of you educate also businesses upon or is that something businesses want to come to you? Um, Dean, we want to improve our conversion rate. What's your typical experience? Um, I've been actually talking about conversion rate optimization as a term for a long time. Um, we, we find that business owners don't understand 
that term itself. So again, it's it's all about accessible. At the end of the day, is I want to increase my leads. Yep. Well, in theory, that's conversion rate optimization. You know, because when you look at a site that gets ten thousand hits a month and they're only getting thirty inquiries, you're like, hold on, <laughs> we let before we look at creating more more um, I suppose inbound or traffic directed to the site. Let's discuss the current yep. uh, and let's work with that because I see that as the low hanging fruit. I see that that's that's people coming to your site that already are engaged to know you. So why why put any effort anywhere else at the start of any any uh, strategy? You know, you've got to start there. Um, so that's a big thing that I always look at, especially with e-commerce. You know, a big thing that we're doing for a big uh, uh, rebuild for an e-commerce client is the whole reason why we're doing it has come from a conversion perspective. Um, and those other things, brand reposition, uh, representation, because it's not being represented correctly. But at the end of the day, it really came down to of hard, cold numbers with a director saying, I want to see more conversions through direct sales. OK, yeah. well, let's sort out your website. <laughs> so this is where sort of closing the circle that you mentioned at the very beginning, that ultimately the conversation ends up being with a business person and you running through a conversation by your conversion rate optimization or call it more leads from the website and then sort of being back to the numbers with that individuals. Very good. Yeah, uh, I want to slowly wrap it up, being conscious of your time as well. So maybe the last thing that I wanted to ask you is maybe a bit of a more of a personal question is if you could go back now, sort of zoom back a couple of years, you starting um, the businesses again or stepping into the, the marketing world, what would be, uh, or the agency world, what would be one advice that you would give uh, yourself? Carl, that's the... That's a really good question. Um, what would one piece of advice be? Um, I think for me, it would be um, have more conversations um, and uh, say yes more. <laughs> Very good. Um, I think that's the, the big thing is, is, you know, I'm sure a lot of inspirational speakers talk about this is um, turn up. Um, it's the whole Facebook story. It's the whole any real entrepreneur success story. You know, it, it really is turn up. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing is a lot of great people that I've met and that I don't call clients at all now. They are friends. Uh, I, I've met from just turning up and some points where I've had proposition where I'm thinking, oh, I'm not sure about this. You know, uh, all the way back for years, years, years ago, from when I was 18, when I originally, after a couple of years of starting out my own online businesses, it, you know, I met the most coolest person ever. It was a lead singer of a of a band, mm -hmm. and you know, he was just a, you know entering his solo career, and now I, 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 as a personal friend, support him on on creating a, a, a independent label um working with all sorts of people so at the end of the day you know you've got to be open to opportunity and just kind of say yes you know it doesn't mean that it's a no for the future you know it doesn't mean that it's always going to be a yes you know etc but just turn up at the end of the day you know because what does a a couple of minutes mean well it could mean that you you have a friendship for life like yeah. and i and i say that a lot about some of the the people that we we work with or me personally engage with it's 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 because i turned up <laughs> really cool i mean that's a very very nice and inspiring insight uh, towards the end of the interview so guys turn up don't be afraid step talk to people ask for people if you have questions ask if you mm. can have a conversation so really really good um yeah th thanks a lot for taking the time today um and uh, thanks for being our guest on the show i uh, appreciate it so much thanks lucas